Hello, Crystal here, and I am here to read chapter six of my book, Woman vs. Freedom, Seven Powerful Ways to Identify and Conquer Your Fears. I wrote this book eight years ago in a very broken place, and y'all, um, I pulled it out recently, not even realizing that this is the strategy or the keys to open up doors um to just you know more healing and more overcoming more conquering and at the, at the time when i wrote it eight years ago it was pretty much a cry for help but even when i was writing these words in this book i didn't understand so here goes so chapter six be passionately content now before i move further this is just you know keys that i realize is now a strategy that can be used in my life to continue to identify my fears and conquer them. And why I say that is because as you focus on each topic of each chapter, there is something that is going to cause you to go deep and really think about some really deep things. Um, so I just encourage you to go back and watch the other videos to get a full understanding. But here we go. Chapter six, be passionately content. You've heard this line before, especially in the Bible, be content. God says, be content. I'm not going to steer you wrong, but I will say, be passionately content. Don't be so content until you are comfortable. Passionately content and comfortably content are totally different. I had to learn the difference. This is how my life was when I was comfortably content. I'd give all my time and effort to a nine to five job that I didn't enjoy saying yes to everything that everyone asked me to do, even when I didn't want to. I would write down many goals and dreams, but I would never take action. I would talk about what I needed or wanted to do, but instead of doing something about it, I would complain. I was stressed, depressed, angry, tired of the norm. I blamed my life situation on everyone but me. Can you relate? Doesn't sound too content, but it's the norm for most women. Women. Now let's talk about being passionately content. When I realized that my comfortable content, my comfortable contentness <laughs> was my fault and one reason for my fear, I had to do something. It took me a long time, but the moment my mindset changed, I started to feel like a new woman. Being passionately content is embracing your current situation while pursuing your future situation. It's all about using what you got until you get what you want. I give thanks to my dad for those words because that's his motto. We all have dreams that we like to see become a reality, but it's all up to that individual. You have a 95 job that you dislike. Be content and stay there until you retire or get fired or... Be passionately content by devoting your break to your passion or take a couple of hours before or after work to pursue your passion. Instead of saying yes to everything, learn to set boundaries and say no. It will be okay. Remember when I asked about uh, coveting in chapter 3? Are you coveting, desiring things in a wrongful way? Are you jealous of what others have? This is seen as sin and is not acceptable in the eyes of God. Instead of desiring what others have, make a plan to work towards your heart's desires. Jealousy is a waste of time, precious time that you can't get back. Just because they have it doesn't mean that you should have it too. Contentment does not mean that we accept injustice or do nothing to move out of untenable places. It does suggest a laissez lay fair existence <laughs> what it does mean however is that we trust god more than we trust our circumstances <clears throat> fearless reflection what are the top five things you cherish in your life and number two what things do you have in your possession that can help you achieve your dreams Here's the scripture. Now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am in, wherewith to be content. Philippians 4, 11, King James Version. And that is the end of chapter six. They're all short, but be passionately content. So just to recap, um, you know, the Bible does tell us to be content. 
And I say be passionately content, or I would say like this is just the perspective that I receive on being content is that, oh, this is going to be good, y'all. So it's the fact that um, instead of being content in what you're in or situations that you don't like, don't, okay, don't be so content until you do nothing about them. So for instance, like I use the nine to five job. You're working in a job right now that you don't like and you don't enjoy. But maybe you cannot move away from that job right now. So the way to be passionately content is to move out of that job that you don't like. You take the time that you have your break. You take um, a couple hours after work that you devote to um your your passions or the things that you desire to do or your purpose that will get you outside of that nine to five job that you're not so content in being in but there's also another option of just moving by faith which is not in this chapter y'all but this is just for me learning over time from the between in the eight years that since i've written this book is that um <clears throat> There was a lot of situations that I was just not content in. And you have to pray and discern and know when you should just move by faith and get out of that and trust that God got you. Or you be content in, in it and you devote time to other things so you can move on from that. So with the scripture, now that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am where they're with to be content. So you're in a job that you don't like, you can learn to be content, but there's a way to do it. And that's be passionately content. <laughs> so your heart's desires may not be in your hands right now, but you do things towards those, towards that to get what you want and what you desire. So you can get out of that. I feel like I just repeated myself like three times because I guess I pretty much explained what I mean for this chapter. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it for that chapter, y'all. Chapter five. Another thing I do want to say before I end this though is that um, be mindful of your contentness. And when, okay, so for instance, like the contentness where you're uncomfortable, but you don't have enough in you to do something about it. Um, and then this is when jealousy can come in and you, um, a covetness, like you can become jealous of other people. You can begin to desire other things that you shouldn't even be desiring. Your contentment can bring on um, stress, which in turn, the stress can bring on you seeking relief from other things or outlets rather than going after your heart's desires so you can get out of that uncomfortable situation, right? Um, so be mindful of how content you are and, and in what ways you're being content. I hope I said that. I think I said that right, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. So just take a moment right now to just think about um, some situations that you've been in that you've been content with, but they're very uncomfortable and you know you shouldn't even be in it anymore or you should have had a, strat a plan or a strategy to get out of it. And um, what, have, what are some situations where you have been passionately content? For instance, like, okay, I'm not okay with this right now, but I'm going to stay right here as I work my way out of it. So if you're in, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of an example from my own life that I can use. Um, Cause I've had many situations where I was very content in a lot of situations that I knew I shouldn't even have been in. I should have been moved away from or out of, or had a plan and a strategy to get out of like, living in my parents house <laughs> i lived in my parents house for um three years that i really did not enjoy and it was very uncomfortable one of the most uncomfortable times of my life i went through a lot just mentally and emotionally 
a lot of things that I had to be healed from or the healing process started during that time, I would say. And it was very hard and I just didn't know how to respond. And I became content, but I became content in a way that was not good. And I just did not have that passion in me to say, okay, I don't like this right now, but this is my situation and this is what I'm going to do about it until I am out of this until I get out of this I I wasn't thinking like that I became content and I just I sat in it y'all in a bad way and I turned to other things to relieve me from the the discomfort that I was feeling the mental emotional discomfort that I was feeling in that situation I didn't know what to do and how to get out of it the right way um, so I fell into some things that I shouldn't even have been doing that I turned to when I should have been turning in the opposite direction and say, okay, I don't like the situation, but it's my life right now. And I'm going to learn from this. So if I'm living with my parents. Why am I living with them, with my children and my husband? Why am I living with them? And what can I do so this doesn't happen again? And at that time, I should have been saying, okay, I'm going to go get me a job that I may not enjoy right now, but it's going to get me the money that I need so I can move my family out of this situation. I'm going to get my credit together, my finances together, so I can even look into buying a home so my family has a home and I don't have to go back to my parents' house um, again, unless like it's just some really dire situation. <laughs> And um, what else? Like, what was going on with me mentally and emotionally where I was so content to stay in that, that I wasn't willing to get my mind right to get out of that? What was going on with me? Um, you know, and I sought out help. And there were people that got me through. But still, it was all up to me at the end of the day. And I just stayed there until, you know, kind of in a sense, waiting for somebody else to come along and save me. I wasn't willing to become passionate enough about getting out of that situation that I could um, implement strategies to to get my family out of that or get myself out of that situation. So I hope that clarifies the difference between the the con being um, comfortably content and passionately content. There's a difference and you just have to have the right perspective about it. Is doing, you know, using what you have until you get what you want. The situation, you know, like my dad always said that. And I, my dad is actually a good example of that. I've watched him, you know, do that a lot. Like, working hard, long days. But if he had goals and he's like, okay, I'm going to be content with this car for now. But I got my mind on that Benz over there. So now I have to go work extra hours, save this, do this, and do that to get that car over there passionately content right so uh that's it for chapter five that is it for chapter is that chapter five or six that's chapter six actually be passionately content so i hope Y'all understood <laughs> what I was trying to say or trying to explain in this, but it definitely applies to my life now. Um, like, for instance, you know, we live in an apartment now, but it's time for us to have a house for our family. So instead of me getting in a place where I'm content and just, you know, like, oh, this is all we have for now. You know, I'm not going to, you know, do whatever and stuff like that. It's like, no, I'm going to become passionately content. And I'm going to say, Lord, I thank you for our apartment and what you've given us. It's such a blessing. It's a major, major um, change from what we were just previously in. But Lord, I need the strategies so I can now move my family into a home and enjoy a home in a yard and you know this desire so what can i do now i'm becoming passionately content i'm going to continue to enjoy what i have right now but i'm working towards what i desire so okay y'all that's chapter six stay tuned for chapter seven <laughs>